Hey, Posey Gloves here, and today we're going to be taking a look at making a little bit more of an advanced monologue type thing at the beginning of a track. So I'm going to play for you this little monologue, probably go up to about halfway up to like right here and show you just the vocal because it's a really morphing vocal. You can tell this is one of my more recent tracks because I like mixed it like there's mixing going on like real mixing and so there's just stuff everywhere if you want to see me make this track like from scratch you can go check it out in my drum and bass series and you can see me actually make the moves that i'm going to be explaining here but here we're just going to look at the overarching theory and what makes this what it is so here you go <laughs> So yeah, that is a cool thing. That I, 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 that should be a pretty easy thing to figure out. It's just a delay. And I think there's even a little bit of reverb on it. Let's go ahead and talk about this. So I, I, I really got into this sort of thing, the idea of this voice that sort of morphs and changes and moves, but it's all the same voice. So I recorded this little dialogue of me talking about fear and whatnot. The first thing you're going to notice about this thing is if I play it, Children are taught to fear. it sort of has this like this nasally quality, but it's like shifting up and down. It's due to the way it's being filtered and the effects that it's going through, of course, but also the way it's being tuned. So this is actually going through an instance of the mouth by Native Instruments, and it's this one over here. And it also goes through a vocal bus. So here it's receiving this processing. This has actually been turned off. I don't know if I automate this. I don't think I do. I think I turned that off. Just this was an idea that I didn't like, so I turned it off. And on the vocal bus, you see it does go through one here. So maybe I enjoyed that more there. But it's going through, you know, your general mixing stuff. I think I sent most of my vocals through here, if not all of them. It says vocal bus, but sometimes I name stuff that was a vocal bus and then I move stuff later. You know how that goes. So it goes through an instance of the mouth and I really like the mouth using it as a, as a preset machine sort of, and I've already said this, so I'm not going to bore you with it again, but on the effects it's, it's number two, it's form and space and form and space is really cool because of the effects they have you using. It doesn't actually use any of the other stuff. So you notice the faders are down. So we have just our input and it's got some stuff going on on it. And then we also have the effects, which has the cavern preset on it. And that gives it its sort of the quality that it does have. And what's cool about it is the the way it it tunes, because when it tunes the vocal, so if we take this off and we see the vocal, if we click on the keyboard here, it's going to tune it to a C. Children are taught to fear. And so you can see it lighten up, moving around. And basically it's just shifting that voice around. It's causing it to do that sort of unnatural movement. And that's really what I wanted. So I'm like, oh, that's perfect. And so I did that and I morphed it in there. And it gets, it gets scattered in right here amongst these sort of interesting vocal chops. I'm not sure if I have automation down below. So those are hidden in the background. And then we go in and then we hit the main vocoded section. And so here, a couple of things happen. First, I keep it. Children are taught to fear. So you can still hear it in there, but now it's growing a little bit. And we have this vocoder going on. And I believe I'm just using Vocodex for this particular one. It's coming in, and I think I'm also using, let's take a look at what the, so the carrier is something between a saw and a square, mostly saw. It's got some distortion going on, and that's contributing to the timbre of it. This is stuff that I make decisions about while it's going through the vocoder. So that's going in. The vocoder, where is the vocoder? The Vocodex is right here. It's in the middle of the chain. So I have some EQ before anything happens. This was something that I did as an experiment after the vocoder. It's coming in here. You notice I have the noise turned up so you can hear those S's and those T's really easily. And this is, these are just the settings I had. I pretty much just slapped it on there. I usually mess with the band distribution to get something that I really like and mess with these in the order. So those are all covered in the vocodex series. So as we play it, Children. This, I believe, is the vocoder. No. Oh, this is the other thing. 
So the other thing is I have here a time stretching. I just pushed it down with the E2 speech. That was it. And this is going into 23. And on 23, I have a stereo shaper that I suspect that I might be automating this on and off. I can't remember that either. It's been a while since I've looked at the mixing in this track. And then you can see here, this is the curve I settled on. Children are taught to fear. Just a custom fit all the parts together. Because I want to have some room for this last guy, which is the vocoder. Children are taught to fear. So this guy's more of a support. He's playing a supporting role. If I get rid of it. Children are taught to fear. Darkness. Monsters. Blackness in the mirror. Adults are trained. Sounds like General Grievous. So if you ever want to know how to make a General Grievous voice, I'm your guy. So putting these three things together sounded really, really cool. And I really enjoyed it. Now, the thing about the EQ is I kind of underplayed the importance of something like this. This is mega important because this thing can sound darn rubbly and really hard to understand what it's saying. So you really want to be careful about how you treat your low end. Small moves can make a large difference here, especially depending on the elements you have going on in your track. So you do all that and you put it all together and you get something like this. Let me make sure 41 is doing an actual, yeah. So this is that ridiculous bass, like that sound like that really crazy sounding thing i can't even make the noise that it makes that's what that is so that's that it's a really really easy way to do things but it can create a really dynamic moment in your track at the end i use pieces of this and leave parameters that i was automating earlier in their place so here you can see that instead of i have two i have that low end one from the beginning and then over here I've got the E2 speech, and let's see, which one is this going into? 36 and 19. So 19 is the one from earlier, and then 36 is this one. It's going through a fruity reverb, and it's going into 19 as well. But because I didn't pitch it like I pitched the other one, so this one's lower, then this one's like the same. That's where I get that second quality from. Children are taught to fear darkness. And then for this, I got I got kind of fancy, but not, this isn't like super fancy because there's there's a better way to do this. I it's not like true truly what I was going for. But then when I did it, I was like, you know what, this is really really cool too. So I I like this, so I just settled on this instead of doing the thing I I thought of first. That tends to happen sometimes. You're like, oh, that was like equally as cool as what I was gonna do. So I'll just do that. And it is I recorded this with reverb, then I reversed it. And I realized afterwards I had done things in a way that it was not going to do exactly what I wanted, but I'm going to put it there. I was like, dang, this is cool. Because when it ends, I feel like listen to this last little bit. And then I just chopped it right there. Like, like that, that was really nice. I was like, oh, this is the exact effect I want at the end. So... Anyways, that's how I made this vocal. I know it's a little bit dense, but it's also pretty simple at the same time. It just comes down to the way you want to do things. We could play up the mixing, but honestly, it's just like compressioning and smoothing out the spectrum the way that you want. You see I have some upwards compression going on. That's from like video two in this series. And then the vocoder, which you've I have I've pointed you to the videos correctly for that as well and so you're just seeing some examples of this stuff in action and some ways you can dynamically apply it if you have any questions let me know support me on patreon I really appreciate it again this track is called beneath and it was really fun and you can see it being made in the drum and bass series and have a blessed day mm -hmm.